Welsh language from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. Welsh, Cymraeg or Agamraeg, not to be confused with Welsh English, the English language as spoken in Wales, is a member of the Brythonic branch of Celtic, spoken natively in the western part of Britain known as Wales, Cymru, and in the Chubut Valley, a Welsh immigrant colony in the Patagonia region of Argentina. There are also speakers of Welsh throughout the world, most notably in England, the United States and Australia. Status. The 2001 census gives a figure of 20.5% of the population of Wales as Welsh speakers, up from 18.5% in 1991, out of a population of about 3 million. However, the same census shows that 25% of people in Wales were born in another country. The number of Welsh speakers throughout the rest of Britain is uncertain, but numbers are high in the main cities and there are speakers along Wales, England's border with Wales. Even among the Welsh speakers, few residents of Wales are monolingual in Welsh. However, a large number of Welsh speakers are more comfortable expressing themselves in Welsh than in English. A speaker's choice of language can vary according to the subject domain, known in linguistics as code switching. Although Welsh is a minority language, and thus threatened by the dominance of English, support for the language grew during the second half of the 20th century, along with the rise of nationalist political organisations such as the political party Plaid Cymru and Cymdeitha Suriaith Gymraeg, the Welsh Language Society. Welsh as a first language is largely concentrated in the less urban north and west of Wales, principally Gwynedd, Merioneth, Anglesey, Onismorn, Carmarthenshire, North Pembrokeshire, Ceredigion and parts of Western Glamorgan, although first language and other fluent speakers can be found throughout Wales. Welsh is very much a living language. It is used in conversation every day by thousands and seen in Wales everywhere. The Welsh Language Act 1993 and the Government of Wales Act 1998 provide that the Welsh and English languages should be treated on a basis of equality. Public bodies are required to prepare and implement a Welsh language scheme. Thus, local councils and the Welsh Assembly use Welsh as an official language, issuing official literature and publicity in Welsh versions, for example, letters to parents from schools, library information and council information and all road signs in Wales should be in English and Welsh, including the, the Welsh versions of place names, although some of these are recent inventions based on the English names. Welsh also has a substantial presence on the internet, but this is strongly biased towards public bodies. The ratio of search engine hit frequencies for Welsh words to their English equivalents tends to be about 0.1% for formal terms such as addisg, education, cymdeithas, society, or llywodraeth, government but only about 0.01% for everyday terms such as buwch, cow, eirlau, sleet, or cyllech, knife. The UK government has ratified the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages in respect to Welsh. The language has greatly increased its prominence since the creation of the television channel S4C in November 1982, which broadcasts exclusively in Welsh during the peak viewing hours. Given the British government's current plans to ensure that all immigrants know English, it remains to be seen if Welsh will be considered a separate case. At present, a knowledge of either Welsh, English or Scottish Gaelic is sufficient for naturalisation purposes, and it's believed that this policy will be continued in any proposed changes to the law. History and Development Like most languages, there are identifiable periods within the history of Welsh, although the boundaries between these are often indistinct. The earliest extant sources of a language identifiable as Welsh go back to about the 6th century, and the language of this period is known as Early Welsh. Very little of this language remains. The next main period, somewhat better attested, is Old Welsh, from the 9th to the 11th centuries. This was the language of the laws of Howaldar, as well as some poetry from both Wales and Scotland. As Anglo-Saxon colonisation of Great Britain proceeded, the Celtic speakers in Wales were split off from those in Northern England, speaking Cumbrian, and those in the South West, speaking what would become Cornish, and so the languages diverged. Middle Welsh, or Cymraeg Canol, is the label associate attached to the Welsh of the 12th to 14th centuries, of which much more remains than for any earlier period. This is the language of nearly all surviving early manuscripts of the Mabinogion, although the tales themselves are certainly much older. Middle Welsh is reasonably intelligible, albeit with some work, to a modern-day Welsh speaker. Modern Welsh can be divided into two periods. The, uh, the first, early modern Welsh, ran from the 14th century to roughly the end of the 16th century, and was the language used by David Ap Gwilym. Late modern Welsh began with the publication of William Morgan's translation of the Bible in 1588. 
Like its English counterpart, the King James Version, this proved to have a strong stabilising effect on the language, and indeed the language today still bears the same late modern label as Morgan's language. Of course, many minor changes have occurred since then. Grammar Phonology There are 28 letters in the Welsh alphabet, or groups of pairs of letters. The letters are A, named A, B, named B, C, named Ek, CH named ECH, D named D, Double D named ETH, E named E, F named EV, Double F named F, G named EGG, NG named ENG, H named H, I named E, L named L, double L named S, M named M, N named N, O named O, P named P, PH named F or OF, R named R, RH named R, S named S, T named T. TH named F, U named E, W named U, and Y named E. Uh. H indicates an aspirate mutation in MH, NH, and NGH. PH is only used as a result of an aspirate mutation. Y indicates E uh in monosyllabic words or non final syllables, but E everywhere else. U and Y are usually pronounced I in North Wales and E in South Wales. SI indicates SH when followed by a vowel. Vowels come in long variants indicated when they're marked by a circumflex. A, A, E, O, E, U and U. Er. Welsh also has diphthongs. A, E, I, A, I, I, A, U, I, which but can be uh, shortened to a or a when it acts as the plural ending. A W O E I A E U A E W A E Y A O E I O I I O U I O W O U W U W Y O E and Y W U. The letter J only occurs in foreign loanwords, and the letter combination TS is used in foreign loanwords to represent the CH sound. The stress in spoken Welsh is almost invariably on the penultimate syllable of a word. The few exceptions are indicated by the presence of an acute accent, for example, farewell. The presence of a diuresis or umlaut above a vowel indicates that it is to be pronounced fully, not as part of a diphthong. For example, C-O-P-I diuresis O to copy is pronounced copio, not copio. Welsh also uses a grave accent to mark vowels that should be short when a long vowel would normally be expected. For example, pass, a cough, pass, a pass or permit. Moog, smoke, mug, a mug. The positioning of the stress means that related words or concepts, or even plurals, can sound quite different as syllables are added to the end of a word and the stress moves correspondingly. For example, uskriv, an article or an essay, uskriven, writing, uskriveniadai, writings, uskrivenedig, written, uskriveni, to write, uskrivenith, a secretary, uskrivenothes, a female secretary, uskrivenothion, Secretaries. Note also how adding a syllable to uskrivenith to turn uskrivenothes changes the pronunciation of the second y. This is because the pronunciation of y depends on whether or not it's the final syllable. The connection between the Welsh word uskriv and the Latin scribo is fairly clear, taking diachronic sound shifts into account. Morphology. Initial consonant mutation. Initial consonant mutation is a phenomenon common to all Celtic languages. The first letter of a word in Welsh may change depending on grammatical context, such as when the grammatical object directly follows the grammatical subject, or when preceded by certain words. For example, e, un, and oh, Welsh has three mutations, the soft mutation, the nasal mutation, and the aspirate mutation. 
the radical P takes the soft mutation B, the nasal mutation M, and the aspirate Phi. The radical B takes the soft mutation V and the nasal M. The radical T takes soft mutation D, nasal N, and aspirate Th. Radical D takes soft mutation Eth and nasal N. Radical, radical C takes soft mutation G, nasal N, and aspirate Ch. Radical G takes soft mutation, well it disappears in the soft form, and the nasal mutation Eng. The radical M takes soft mutation V, radical S takes soft mutation L, and radical R takes soft mutation R. For example, the word for stone is Kareg, but the stone is Ugareg, soft mutation. My stone is Vungareg, nasal mutation, and her stone is Echareg, aspirate mutation. The examples show usage in the standing language. The soft mutation is slowly supplanting the nasal and aspirate mutations as the mechanism behind the mutation ceases to be understood. These days the aspirate mutation is only rarely carried out for words beginning with C in colloquial language, and in some areas it is totally unknown. The nasal mutation is now only used in two circumstances and is also being replaced by the soft mutation. The article. Welsh has no indefinite article, an equivalent of A in English. The definite article, which precedes the word it modifies and whose usage differs little with that of English, has the form a, er, er, or apostrophe a. Er. The rules governing their usage are when the word begins with a vowel, er is used, for example, er arv, the garden. When the previous word ends in a vowel, regardless of the quality of the word following, apostrophe r is used, for example, margath tiachan, the cat is outside. This rule takes precedence over the other two. In all other cases, er is used, for example, a bachgen, the boy. The article triggers the soft mutation when it's used with a feminine singular noun, for example, a tubasoges means a princess, but a dubasoges, the princess. Nouns. Like most other European, Indo-European languages, all nouns belong to a certain grammatical gender. In Welsh there are two genders, masculine and feminine. Aside from nouns whose gender is clear from the meaning, for example, a mam, mother, is feminine, there is no pattern and gender simply must be learnt. In Welsh there are two systems of grammatical number. There are the singular plural nouns, which correspond to singular plural number system of English. Noun plurals are unpredictable and formed in several ways. Some nouns form the plural with an ending, usually I. For example, tad, father, and tadai, fathers. Others form the plural through vowel change, for example, bachgen, boy, and bechgin, boys. Still others form the plurals through some combination of the two, for example, chwair, sister, and chwiorid, sisters. The other system of number is the collective unit system. The nouns in this system seem to form the singular from the plural. Most nouns which belong in this system are frequently found in groups such as plants or animals, for example, plant, children, and plentin, child, or coid, forest, and coiden, tree. Genitive relationships are expressed by apposition. The genitive in Welsh is formed by putting two noun phrases next to each other, the possessor coming second. This is almost analogous to, almost analogous to a silent English of. So English, the cat's mother, or mother of the cat, becomes the Welsh mam agath, literally mother the cat. The man's car's windows is fenestri car dyn, literally windows car the man. In Welsh, the thing possessed never takes the article. Adjectives. In Welsh, adjectives normally follow the noun they qualify, while some, such as hen, pob, and hoch, precede it. For the most part, adjectives are uninflected, although there are a few which maintain distinct masculine, feminine, or singular plural distinctions. After feminine and singular nouns, adjectives receive the soft mutations. Adjective comparison in Welsh is fairly similar to the English system. Adjectives with one or two syllables receive the endings ach, er, and a, est. For example, banog, high, banogach, higher, banoga, highest. Adjectives with two or more syllables use the words mui, more, and muia, most. For example, temladwi, sensitive, mui temladwi, more sensitive, muia temladwi, most sensitive. Adjectives with two syllables could go either way. There are possessive adjectives in Welsh. First person singular, ver, 
second person singular de, third person masculine singular a, third person feminine singular a, first person plural ein, second person plural eich, third person plural a. The possessive adjectives precede the noun they qualify, which is often followed by the corresponding form of the personal pronoun. For example, vamara i, my bread, de vera di, your bread, e vera ve, his bread, and so on. The demonstrative adjectives are ma, this, and na, that. They follow the noun they qualify, which also takes the article. For example, a chevre, the book, a chevre ma, this book, a chevre na, that book. Pronouns. The Welsh pronouns are first person singular e, second person singular t or d, third person masculine singular a and o, third person feminine he, first person plural ni, second person plural chi, third person plural nu. Verbs. In Welsh, the majority of tenses make use of an auxiliary verb, usually bored to be. It's conjugated irregularly. Prepositions. In Welsh, prepositions frequently change their form when followed by a pronoun. These are known as, as inflected prepositions. Most of them, such as dan, follow the same basic pattern. First person singular, danai. Second person singular, danati. Third person masculine singular, danove or danovo. Third person feminine singular, danihi. First person plural, danoni. Second person plural, danochi. Third person plural, daninu. There's some dialectical variation, particularly in the first and second person singular forms. In some per places, one may hear danoi, danoti, or danachi. The majority of prepositions take a soft mutation. Other features of Welsh grammar. Possessives as object pronouns. The Welsh for I like Rodri is duin hoffi Rodri, or meaning I am liking Rodri. But I like him is duin e hoffi ve. Literally, I am his liking him. I like you is doing the I am your liking you, and so on. Significant use of auxiliary verbs. While English can either use verbs directly, for example, I go, or with it, with the aid of an auxiliary verb, I am going, here using to be as the auxiliary, Welsh inclines very strongly towards the latter use. In the present tense, all verbs are used with the auxiliary board to be. So, duin mind is literally I am going, but also means simply I go. In the past and future tenses, there are inflected forms of all verbs, but it's more common in speech to use the verb noun, pervenu, loosely equal to the infinitive in English, together with the inflected form of gneid, to do. So, I went can be miesi or minesi vind, and I will go can be miai or minai vind. There is also a future form using the auxiliary board giving vthai in mind, perhaps best translated as I will be going, and an imperfect tense, a continuous habitual past tense, also using board with roithin in mind, meaning I used to go or I was going. Affirmative markers, me, mainly in the north, and ve, mainly in the south, are often placed before inflected verbs to show that they are declarative. This is mainly a colloquial formation and is not often seen in written Welsh or more formal language. Dialects like any natural language, Welsh has a number of different dialects. These are very different evident in the spoken and to a lesser extent the written language. A convenient if slightly simplistic classification is into North Walian and South Walian terms, or Gog and Huntu, based on the word for North, Gogled, and <coughs> South Walian word for them over there. The differences between dialects encompass vocabulary, pronunciation and grammar, although particularly in the last regard the differences in fact are relatively minor. An example of the difference between North and South Walian usage would be the question, do you want a cup of tea? In the North this would typically be, while in the South the question, would be more likely. An example of a pronunciation difference between Northern and Southern Welsh is the tendency of Southern dialects to lisp the letter S. For example, M-I-S, a month, would tend to be pronounced Mis in the North and Mish in the South. In fact, the difference between, difference between the dialects of modern spoken Welsh pale into insignificance compared to the difference between the spoken and literary languages. The latter is significantly more formal and is the language of Welsh translations of the Bible. Among other things, although the Babel Camarag Newydd, the new Welsh Bible, is significantly less formal than the traditional 1588 Bible. 
Although the question, do you want a cup of tea, is not likely to occur in literary Welsh usage, if it did, it would be on the lines of a oes arnach eisio capanad o de. The corresponding spoken form would be dych eisio panad o de. Among the characteristics of the literary as against the spoken language are higher dependence on inflected verb forms, a shift in the usage of some of the tenses, a reduction in the explicit use of pronouns since the information is usually conveyed in the verb preposition inflections, and a greatly reduced tendency to substitute English loanwords for native Welsh words. Breton and Cornish are quite closely related languages. Welsh in education Welsh is widely used in education, and many Welsh universities are bilingual, notably the University of Wales Bangor. Under the national curriculum, school children in Wales must st study Welsh up to the age of 16. According to the Welsh Language Board, over a quarter of children in Wales attend schools which teach predominantly through the medium of Welsh. The remainder study Welsh as a second language in English medium schools. Specialist teachers of Welsh, called Athrawon Bro, substitute the, support the teaching of Welsh in the national curriculum.